even if you have the permission from the government, even if you have the permission from your local rabbi, in Shamaim you do not have that permission. Why? It's immoral, it's not right, it's a bad product. And you would not want to buy it. So the first thing that you should know is rule of thumb. If you wouldn't be a customer, don't sell it. That's the rule number one. Two, if the commissions are really high, usually that's a problem. Why? Nobody likes to pay high commissions for good products. Good products sell themselves. If the commission's very high, there's usually something wrong. Three, if you see a specific group of people focus and all of a sudden there's new businesses selling the same product popping up like like uh like mushrooms everywhere all of a sudden everybody's in the cash advance business all of a sudden everybody's in the insurance business insuring uh washing machines all of a sudden everybody's selling uh you know uh, this everyone's selling this why there's a scam the scam. I, Baruch Hashem, I've been, I've been around, I've been alive for a long time. Baruch Hashem, I've seen a lot of scams. Back in the day, when I was probably your age, there used to be what's called the Nokia scam. Nokia scam. All the electronic stores, they had this thing that would sell phones, and they would uh, Nokia would give the sellers points for selling phones. But they found a scam that, in essence, you collect the point by just dialing these phone numbers. And what would happen, you collect these points, these make these fake, uh, fake uh, uh, names, and they would send you product. They'd send you free cameras, free cars, free stuff, just for these fake things. And people made a fortune out of it. Or they sold refurbished stuff. They sold it, they took the stuff that you bought as, refur uh, as refurbished, they rehashed it, taking off all the stickers, making it new, selling it as a new product. And a lot of other scams, a lot of scams out there. Don't be involved in scams. Why? Because even if you have the permission of the government to do it, which typically doesn't exist. Eventually, the Dean of Shemaim will come upon a person and those people are guaranteed to lose all of their money. Guaranteed to lose all the money. You see, if you look at the history of all of those people that had these finagling type of things, eventually they ended up losing everything. If you, uh, you want to read about it, uh, look up on the internet, Crazy Eddie. Crazy Eddie is one of the original s scammers from the Jewish community from the 1970s, 1980s. He started with the electronics stores. I met his, uh, his, his partner when I was still on Wall Street. He's the guy that ratted them out. Uh, he was his partner and uh, he ended up going to jail and so on. Unfortunately, Crazy Eddie made a big chilul Hashem. Uh, and uh, Crazy Eddie started a lot of these scams. But he went the highest possible level. Unfortunately, a lot of other people followed suit and to this day they use his tricks. To make, to make all types of scams to beat the system. Don't be part of that system. Why? Eventually, HaKadosh Baruch Hu shows you who's boss. You see, some people go to jail, some people die early, some people see their kids die, some people uh, uh, get uh, uh, all types of lawsuits, uh, lose their money, gambling, all types of issues. Straight, honest, legit. You end up being the biggest, uh, the biggest success. That's the thing. All of the people, I, I'm telling you right now, I've said this already in the last couple of years since I've talked about it, there's a lot of people that have gone into the cash advance business and people are making a fortune out of it, millions and millions of dollars out of it. I guarantee you that within a matter of years, every single one of those people is not only going to lose all of their money, many of them are going to lose their lives, many of them are going to lose their freedom, they're going to go to jail. It's going to be a major massacre of disaster in that industry. You'll see one after another, every one of them going, why? Because eventually Kadosh Baruch is going to close the shop. Why? It's happened before. It's happened before. It happened in England 900 years ago. It happened in Germany 70 years ago. It happened many times. And usually those people that are in those corrupt businesses that are taking advantage of some type of industry loophole, either there's no compliance in the industry, there's no regulation in the industry, there's no watchdog in the industry, there's just a lot of stupid people in the industry and all types of things. Usually a Kadosh Baruch Hu says, oh, they may not be watching, but I'm watching. He's watching him. When he watches, he has patience. He's patient. Like Haman. Haman was the richest person in the world before he became zero. Don't be one. Don't be one of those. Straight, you'll get to a lot of success. And you'll see that some of the people that have been the most successful in history weren't criminals like those people. They did business hard way, but the honest way. And they got far. They got far. And that's, that's, that's the best way to go. Yeah, another one. A lot, a lot of cash events, Ken. a lot of cash events, a lot of my friends are in it, and I, I try explaining to them 
how bad it really is to be in that business. But every, every single one that's doing it says, my rabbi gave me the head dead. He says, it's okay to lend if it's to a non-Jew. And that's the excuse they give me and my friends every time. And I don't get where a rabbi, like, like, I guess a respectable rabbi, would get, would get this. That doesn't make sense. The Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin, also Masechet Shabbat, talks about Korach. As Korach, Korach was a Navi at some point. Tzaddik at one point, before HaKadosh Baruch put him in Gainom to this day, Korach. But Korach didn't go to Gainom by himself. He took 250 of the biggest rabbis in the world with him. Because they went with Korach. So Gemara asks, how did Korach convince the biggest rabbis in the world, aside from Moshe Rabbeinu, Aaron HaKohen, Yeshua ben Nun, Kalev ben Yefune, and Betzalel, and uh, Nachshon ben Aminadav. Literally, there's a handful of tzaddikim left in the world, and the other 250 biggest rabbis in the world are going to gain on with Korach. How did he convince all these people? Come on, ask this question. How? Korach was rich, and he gave big donations. You know what happens when you give big donations? All of a sudden, you become the Marad Atra. All of a sudden, your Da'at Torah, all of a sudden, your opinion is what matters. Your opinion, yeah, yeah, the Moshe Rabbeinu said what you said. Oh, yeah, you know what? What'd you say? What did the check say? Million dollars? Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Your wife does not have to be modest anymore. It's not, it's, she's like everybody else. She doesn't have to cover her hair. She's like everybody else. It's okay. No, modesty is not relevant to your wife because you're rich. I mean, no, not because you're rich, because, because it's, that's how everybody else is. Now, all of a sudden, the rich guy, Bala, bala, you know, bala maaz, bala, bala in Hebrew they say, the one that owns the hundred is the one that owns the opinion. So that's what happened. It's in the Torah already. It's in the Gemara. So what happens? These rabbis, these, these, these toys, these atzitim, that are telling people they can do cash advance. All of these reshaim, these rabbis. What are they doing? Simple. They're setting up their bank accounts. They're telling them, listen, what business are you in? Cash advance. Who you donate to? Oh, no one? Okay, let me come, come, I'll paskin for you. Come, I'll paskin for you and I'll show you where to donate the ma'asir. So you have bracha. You have bracha in your business? You have bracha. You want bracha, right? And you're, you want also a lachic permission that you're allowed to do what you're doing. This is where you donate to. Make, you know what? Forget, forget check. Let's do wire. wire tra- you know what? Let's do direct deposit. Direct deposit, they become a partner in the business. They become a partner in the business. They own 10, 20% of the business. How do they own 10, 20%? The ma'asir. The Maser, he owns 10% of the business. Chomesh, you want to be a tzaddik? He owns 20% of the business without working. For what? For giving him the permission to be a thief. The permission to be a thief. No posek in the world, real posek in the world will allow people to be in the cash advance business. Not because they're lending to goim. But because of what they charge. What they charge makes their business illegal according to the Torah. Anybody. Surely they're not allowed to lend the money to Jews. But they do. Because no application is allowed to ask somebody, Hey, uh, Steve, are you Jewish? You can't ask. You don't know who you're lending to. You don't know who you're lending to. You could be lending to a Jew. You could be lending even to a from Jew. And then you, you lost your Olam Abba with that one lend. You lend to a thousand people. One guy is a Jew, you have no Olam Abba. One guy is a Jew. You led to 10,000 people. 10,000 people you have. You're, you're a big uh, tzaddik in, in the business. Everybody wants to borrow money from you. Right? One guy is a Jew. One guy. You lent to 10,000 people. One guy is a Jew. You go to Gainom forever. Only a moron and a rasha merusha will permit such a business. Doesn't exist. Then I said, no, no, if he's a Jew, we sign a teriska. How do you know he's a Jew? Maybe he doesn't go to Yeshua. Maybe he's not uh, this. Maybe he's not that. It's a lot of problems. And even more so, even if he's not a Jew, who gave you the permission to charge 40 points, 40%, 50%, 80% interest? What per second in the world allowed you to charge such uh, predatory rates? What's a predatory rate? A rate that you know people cannot pay. Unless their business skyrockets. Meaning, unless your customer ends up succeeding beyond his own ambitions, he will default on a loan at some point or another. Why? Who can pay 40% interest? Go, go borrow $10,000 with 40% interest. See what happens. You go bankrupt. So, so nobody could allow it. The Torah itself does not allow such a thing. So now, if a person says, no, no, I lend money, I try to focus on goyim, a general public, and so on. We depend on a majority, and so on. 
And I charge normal rates. What's normal rates? I charge 15 points, 15%, like the banks, 8%, whatever it is. Okay, you have permission to do it. But nobody allows the people to charge 50, 70, 80, 100, 200, 400% that they charge. And that's what they charge. I didn't make this stuff up. I talk to people in the industry. I talk to people in the industry. They hate me, a lot of them. That uh, whoever, leaves the, whoever likes me, leaves the industry. Whoever doesn't like me, whoever... Uh, whoever uh, stays in the industry, ends up hating me. Why? Because I remind them that what they're doing, everybody knows it's not allowed. Nobody thinks it's a kosher business. Nobody. Even the people doing it know it's not a kosher business. Why? How? Would you borrow money from those people? Would you pay 50%, 60%, 80% interest unless you were desperate? You're not allowed to, and you're also not even allowed to, to, to lend money to such a person. There's so many halachic problems with that business that that's why you're never going to find a gdola do that will ever write anything good about it or write any psak on it. Not one. War, all the letters that they have is from some local rabbi that nobody knows, but he likes money. Some guy that likes money. Nobody knows these rabbis. Nobody knows. Go ask. Go ask the gdola do. Go ask the Rishon Zion. Why do you think the, the, uh, the community in Brooklyn doesn't have connections to the Rishon Zion? Some of the people in that community can get them on the phone. If they really want, they want, they can get him on a plane to America tomorrow. How come they don't get a psak from him? How come they don't get a psak from him? For the other stuff, they get a psak. How come they don't get a psak for this? Why don't they get a, uh, a psak from the uh, Arab Shalom? Why don't they get a psak from uh, all of the Dolim in America? Why don't they get from one of them? Nothing. They don't get anything. They get from, from some local rabbi that likes money, that wants to buy a second house. And he's going to kosher their business. Why? Because the rabbi has the same desires as them. They both want money and they want to find a so-called kosher way to be thieves. And eventually they're all going to lose. And this is something that I've brought in, I think maybe four, five, six shiurim I did about that industry. I brought many sources from the Torah, from the poskim, from the uh, Rishonim, uh, that show that it's 100% forbidden to be a part of their business in any stretch, in any way, to be an owner, to be a broker, to be anything, anything connected to that business. And I also brought historical events that happened to the Jewish people when they were in this type of business. It's not the first time. Am Yisrael unfortunately has a history of being in the lending business in such a fashion that we're known as predatory lenders throughout all of history. It's not a new thing. So much so that Shlomo HaMelech, Shlomo HaMelech 3,000 years ago forbid lending. Shlomo Melech made a takana, he's not allowed to, not, not to do it. Shlomo Melech already dealt with this problem. 900 years ago, we had a massacre in England because of our lending. One of the reasons why the, uh, the, uh, the, the Nazis, the Nazis, justified murdering and massacring us and so on is because of lending practices we had. Part of which were made up, they, they obviously imagined in their wicked minds, part of it was true. Part of the stuff that they, they, they blamed us to do was true. We did charge high rates. We did do certain things that were wrong. We can't, can't just say, oh, no, it's all fake. It's not all fake. There are certain things that are historical validations. And the reality is, every single time we were in a position of power, it's because there were a few Jews that were lending money to the Goyim. And many times it happened that they charged them high rates and the Goyim got angry and they revolted. Why? Nobody wants to pay the high interest. So what do they do? Instead of paying the interest, they kill you. Simple. It's very easy for a goy to kill. So all of these people that are building this industry, I've said it in my shurim in the past, and I'll say it again. All of the Jewish people, and you could put this on YouTube, because it's already on there anyway. You could send it to all the rabbis and send them, it's for me with my face. Every single person that's putting up, that's writing people a permission to be in the cash advance business, merchants cash advance, all these stupid businesses, all the fake stuff that they're doing. Every single one of those rabbis will go to Gainom and will never come out. Why? They are part of creating the next Holocaust that's coming to America. They are creating the next Holocaust that's coming to America. Why? History shows us what we've done, what transpired. What we've done, what transpired, what we're doing, and what's transpiring. Cash advance business rise, anti-Semitism rise. You see how the world is operating. The corruption is rising. With all of the billions of dollars that are in the cash advance business, 
all of the rabbis that are involved in the cash advance business, all of the religious Jews in the cash advance business, how come you don't have one respectable gdola dol, one respectable posek to give a psak on the industry? Say, this is allowed, this is not allowed, this rate is allowed, this rate is not allowed. You have it on every other business that Jews are in, you have major poskim overseeing certain things. How come you don't have it on this business? How come they're taking kids, bachurim, out of yeshivot, out of kolels, and putting them in this garbage business? All of a sudden, the guy that can barely speak five words of English becomes the number one salesman in a cash advance business. How could that be? How does anybody think that this is normal? These are unfortunately people that are chasing money and they're destroying the people. They're destroying society. They're going to destroying small businesses. The average co consumer defaults on a loan, is forced to take another loan, and is in essence in a never-ending uh, battle against paying interest, and that's why it's called a predatory loan. It's a loan that kills its owner, kills the, the, the person that borrows the money, slowly but surely. What you ends up happening is that the, the, you're selling a product that in its nature, in its nature, it's there to kill the consumer. So to, to, for, for Am Yisrael to have anything to do with that is obviously a chilul Hashem at the least. Obviously against the Torah. And anyone that wants to say otherwise, give me a posik. Give me one real posik. One gadol with billions of dollars in the business. We're not talking about, it's not a rinky dick uh, laundromat. It's not a laundromat. It's not a little kolel with a million dollar budget. It's a multi-billion dollar business. There are some companies that have gone public to five, six, seven billion dollar market values. Talking about billions of dollars in this business. People are making a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a month after six months in the business. Talking about big money in this business. You can't get one posek, one real posek to give you. Go, I'll give, I'll give you the phone number. I'll give you the phone number to some of the greatest poskim in a the generation. They wouldn't even talk to these people. They said the ganavim, the thieves. Thieves. I have connections to the uh, head posek in, in, in the uh, Av Bedin in Yerushalayim business. Av Bedin in the, uh, in the Bedin of Yerushalayim when it comes to the uh, issues of business. Arav Gidon ben Moshe. When we mention this to him, he says, but it's only Goim, right? Meaning, not Goim, the customers. Goim selling it. No, no, no. No. Jews are selling it. He goes, how's it no, be done? He says, you can't do things like that. He goes, who does? Not only a few people. I said, no, no, a lot. He started crying. Said, Listen, the, the people I speak to about this business, they started crying about this. They can't believe that we've gone down so bad. So bad. And when I tell them rabbis have certified this, they say, ah, they reform. Reform. No real posek will give you a permission to do this business. It's, it's simply a predatory business. Eventually, a Kadosh Baruch Hu will show everybody who's boss. And everybody that uh, ignored the truth, they're not only going to lose their everything that they've made, they'll lose the future too. Because it's going to be very, very hard to do tshuva. Very hard to do tshuva from such a thing. In so many words, you're, you're, you're practically considering, like you're murder, murdering every customer. Just, just think of it this way. A Jew is there to better the world. Not to take advantage of the world, to better the world. How is anybody bettering the world by giving them a loan that they know statistically they cannot pay? And you tell them, no, but statistically we have this. Habibi, I was in the business for 20 years. I know more about finance than any rabbi on planet earth. Not because I'm a rabbi. I was on Wall Street for 20 years. That's my, that's my expertise. Don't tell me who can pay and who cannot pay. Doesn't exist. Statistically, the business is a flawed business. It's a flawed business. You know how we know one of the main things logic will tell you it's a flawed business? If it wasn't flawed, this business would become standard everywhere. Now they're going to tell you, yeah, but Goldman Sachs is getting into it and a few hedge funds are getting into it. Yeah, but they dip into a lot of different things. They dip in, they dip out, they dip in, they dip out. They didn't make their primary business into this garbage. Nobody is, because everybody knows the bubble's going to pop at some point. Just like people dip into speculative real estate, speculative Bitcoin, speculative this, speculative that. The more money you have, the more you have to speculate a little bit. But no real entity is getting into this business. Why? Because it's a corrupt business, and eventually it's going to go down to nothing. 
and all of the people that have given an hechsher on it are going to lose in a big way. And I'm not even talking about losing this world. They're going to lose Olam Abba. Because they're leading countless people astray and they're leading the worst people to lead astray. They're leading the religious people astray. That's what makes them the biggest murderers. If you went and misled a bunch of goyim, some people in China, some people in Hodu, some people in, I don't know, Afghanistan, to go do this business, that's one thing. You're taking kids out of yeshiva, you're taking kids out of a kolel, and you're telling them that after a couple of months you're going to make $20,000 a month, and you're not even educating them enough to tell them that they're stealing. By the time they realize they're stealing, they're already too far in. No, hard it is to leave that business. I had a few guys, Baruch Hashem, I got them out of that business, more than a few guys. But some of these guys left the business crying. They said, listen, Rabbi, I was 20 years old, I was making 50000 a month. Where am I going to make that kind of money? I told him, you're not going to make that money. Tell you the truth, you're not going to make that money. You're not going to make half that money. Why? You're 20 years old with zero experience about anything. You have no right to make $50,000 a month. You're making $50,000 a month, you should have already known by that there's something wrong with it. You have zero experience, the only thing you know how to do is talk. You didn't even know what you were selling. You didn't even know about half the stuff that I knew about the product and I'm and I was not even in the business. So, a lot of people, they're, they're, they're going into it, mamash, themselves as victims. Themselves they're victims. But you can't cry victim forever. Once you start collecting checks and cashing checks of 50000 a month, you can't cry victim. Can't cry victim anymore. So, all of those guys, all of those girls, all of those rabbis that are in that lending business, the predatory lending, they're charging 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200 percent interest rates. They have themselves a problem with a Kadosh Baruch Hu, and uh, it's a problem that is going to be very, very hard to solve. Very, very hard to solve, if not impossible. And if they want to say otherwise, don't waste my time with your text messages and insults that they've been sending me for the last few years since I exposed this business. There's no need for that. It doesn't affect me anyway. I have skin like a lion. It doesn't make a difference to me. The, send me a psak alakha from a respectable posik. Not your local uh, rabbi that only his wife heard about him. A real posik. Go to Gdolado. Go to, if you don't have one, I'll give you one. Get a real psak alakha from a real posek after giving him the details. I'll give you whatever you want. I'll erase all of my lectures and I'll start promoting your business. Not one of them will ever do it. You know why? It's not possible. Same thing I said to the guys in the wig business. Show me one real psak alakha, one real posek that can tell you that all of the real hair wigs are kosher, really kosher. Like there's actually somebody that follows them like you're supposed to follow, like you follow meat. Nobody can write a real psak alakha that's allowed. Nobody can tell you that's really allowed. Nobody can tell you it's 100% they know it's not coming from idolatry. I can tell you it's coming from idolatry because I have evidence, I have research, I have videos, I have, I, have, I, have, I have witnesses that still live there in India now. That's the thing. When you're dealing with, with, with one of these people that you know, grew up in a community that told them he's a nobody, and uh, he became some avrech and eventually they named the local rabbi, they could play with that guy and they could tell him whatever they want. I didn't grow up in a local. I, I grew up in the streets. I grew up in school. I grew up educating myself. I grew up getting an MBA. I grew up on Wall Street. I was on Wall Street for 20 years. Baruch Hashem, I grew up doing a lot of different things. You can't, can't play with me. I come with proofs. I come with evidence. Every shiur, I come with proofs. Why? Because on Wall Street, we had this policy. If you don't have evidence for what you say, you're not allowed to talk. Don't tell me this company is worth such a thing. I don't care what you think. I need evidence that it's worth such and such. I need evidence. I need information. I need you to know, tell me what's the CEO's phone number. I need you to tell me what he does for a living. I need you to do what he does for fun. I need you to tell me how many kids he has. I need you to tell me what the company does on the books that's not being shown on the books. I need you to tell me everything and anything that the public knows and doesn't know before you tell me what you think it's worth. So, if you're, not gonna, if you're gonna tell me with your opinion, take your opinion and send it to the bathroom. When I come to my shiurim, I come with evidence. I come with information, I come with sources. When I brought the sources against the wig business or against the, uh, the, uh, the cash advance business and all the heretics out there, I come with sources. Why? Because that is how you deal with things. And they've already had the information for years. Their best defense, cursing me out. 
That's the best defense they have. They send me text messages and they curse me out. Oh, you don't know what to do. Blah, 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 blah. And some of this is from rabbis. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, like a frog. Back, back, back. Give me psak alacha, real chacham that's going to tell me this is allowed. Nobody's going to tell you it's allowed. Nobody. All the boys that hear this, all the girls that hear this, you want to do yourself a big chesed? Run away tomorrow. Don't even cash the next last check. Because you're going to have to pay all of that money in blood. Every penny you made from that business, you're going to have to pay back. Don't even cash the last check. Let them keep it. Let them keep it.